Hello and welcome to Pinball Reviews. My name is Luke and today I'm going to be talking through this classic pinball machine by Stern from 1980. It's called Sea Witch and there's some lovely artwork and designs, lots of flippers and three pop bumpers. This is one of 2,503 made, so a good pinball machine back then for Stern. So let's have a little look and see how I did. Right, first up, sensible thing to do at the beginning here is a gentle plunge, but I've gone for a full plunge and gone straight for those centre drop targets. You see I've got four of them down now. There we go, I've, I've gone for them again, but really the next thing to do is go for the drop targets on the left. Oh, but I've drained. That's one of the things I'm not so keen about this game. Sometimes you can drain from the in-lane to out-lane. But what you want to be doing is going through each of those drop targets. So there's four in the middle, and then three on the left, and then there's four tucked away just at the back right there. I'm playing against Greg here. He's one of the best players in the country. He's often placed very high. He's just going for those top bumpers. You can see they're lit up there. Sorry, the top drop targets. Now, the reason we go for the drop targets in this game, the middle one, the left one, the ones at the back, is because they give you a bonus multiplier. This is a machine from a few years old. It is now 40 years old, Sea Witch, being from 1980. There we go, there's those drop targets at the top. It really is a little bit of a luck uh, to get those. It has to bounce around off the pop bumpers and hopefully it'll hit it. But there's two basically sort of channels where you want to shoot the ball either on the off the right flip or the left at the bottom to get it in and up there and the chance of hitting them. These two top flippers um, are really best for maybe going for those drop targets in the middle or doing the loop shot around the edge. So because it is from 1980, a lot of machines didn't have multiball back then. So there's no multiball on this game. So what you're going for is you're trying to get your bonus multiplier up. Best way to get that up is obviously through each of those drop targets. So that'll go from two times to three times to four times. I think to maybe six, maybe eight times. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I only ever get to about four or five times to be honest. Um, but what that will do is when you drain, it will then top your bonus up much, much further and get you a much higher score. It's the best way of getting the higher scores on this game. So this game, even though it is quite old, currently ranks 103 on pin side. So it's actually you know, not far out of the top 100 pinball machines uh, voted for and played. So that's really good going considering the age of the machine. Some of the things for the reasons of this, I'd say it's a stern machine, which um, it means really nice gameplay. Um, it is really enjoyable to play. This came out with some stiff competition at the same time. Uh, Quicksilver was released in the same year. So was Big Game, Cheetah, Galaxy, Alley, and there was another few games. Time Lord, Alien Annie, I've not heard of that one. Um, Circus by Gottlieb is a very, very pretty machine from 1980. Torch and Buck Rogers. So quite a few different games came out in this year. I do really like the sounds in this game. You get crashing waves, which isn't ever grating or annoying. It's just a nice background soundtrack. This really stood the test of time. In fact, this layout has inspired Stern to create their new Beatles machine, which will have a multi-ball and some spinning areas on the table, also a um, some magnets. But to be honest, it's exactly the same layout. The pops are in the same place. The loop around the outside is there. Oh, Greg's drained. And the loop is there, so lots and lots of similar things. Now, being a classic machine, you get five balls on this, so I'm on my second ball now. I've Greg's got about ten times my score, um, so I need to really focus a little bit in here and play a bit more of a, a better game. Um, so the nice thing about this game is all about the accuracy. You want to get those drop targets. Now, I believe I'm going for the drop targets on the left, which is why I'm trying to get the uh, the ball there to aim for those. Now. Oh, actually, the top one's lit, so maybe I'll go up the top there. A uh, little bit of a close-up play here. You can see, unfortunately, in this machine, one of the things I'm not so keen on about it is somebody has decided to cut the mylar off and they've left a big sort of scratched mark in it, which is a real shame uh, because it's such a nice machine. Um, the mylar on machines is basically a thin layer of plastic which gets stuck over all of the artwork and all the wood. And the idea is that protects it. For years and years of play. Now somebody at some point has decided to try and take that off but the trouble is if you try and take that off the machine when you do peel it up all of the inserts which are the little areas where the lights are um, can peel off as well and uh, they can be very hard to then put that well put those back in and then sand it back down to that level so it ends up being 
maybe more cost than it's worth in a lot of cases. So it's a shame somebody's done that, but it doesn't affect the gameplay at all. As you can see, it's playing very, very nicely. That's one of the pockets I was talking about earlier to get up into that top left to try and get um, some of those. There we go, that's one of them hit. Uh, that's, that's the whole bank done now. So that's that's what I was going for, that top right there to get my bonus multiplier up. Just below the sea witch character on the table, just below her golden hair there, there's three little lights for letting you know one times, two times, you can see it's just lit up for Greg there as he's been playing. Um, about how much your multiplier is. So it starts off with one times bonus multiplier, then it goes two times, then it goes three times, that's two and one lit. Now, one thing to know about this particular machine, the light bulb underneath the drop targets on the left there, for those three, isn't working at the moment it doesn't always work it seems to have a loose connection so once you've got those middle force drop targets you then want to go for ones on the left which are lower down and it goes back up to the top and keeps cycling back down through the middle one bottom one top one so something to know for because i have been times when i first started playing this game i wasn't quite sure where or what i was going for You're able to do tap passes on this game which is quite nice i know i'm going for those three on the left now so I'm going to keep trying to get that one little one left there. Sometimes it can drain down the left there, so you do have to be careful. Still missing it. That's two misses, I think. I want to have to try and have another go at it. Let's see how we go. There we go. Maybe tap pass again. There we go. So we want to get that one little drop target. And I've missed again. Okay, <laughs> that's frustrating, isn't it? It is all about getting those drop targets. It is very satisfying to make the spinner shot. I've got another go at it now. No, still missing. Still too um, too early, unfortunately. The spinner shot's good, nice and satisfying, and also hitting it around the loop on the uh, the upper playfield is good fun too. And what's quite interesting about this game is it's got a little door, a little drop area. So if it goes halfway around the loop, it will fall down the middle into the pop bumpers if you do just enough of a gentle plunge. So that can be quite satisfying to see. There's lots of satisfying shots on this game. Having the four flippers means you've got something to do no matter where the ball is on the play field. So it's not a slow game by any means at all. It's not like you leave it up in the top of the play field and then you're just waiting around for it. So let's see, what's Greg's technique here? He's going for those three on the left as well, I believe. So maybe he's going to let it bounce across. Oh, very, very close. It seems to sort of just catch the other target and he's got it now. Now he's going for the top four targets to again increase that bonus. That's really what you're doing in the game, you're just going back through those um, drop targets, but once you get that bonus multiplier up, it will top the score up quite a lot. I think if you're one of the best players, you're probably aiming for at least a million on this game, around there. Personally, when I play this, I'm quite happy if I've got about half a million. That tends to be quite a good game for me, so at the moment, half a million, that is about half Greg's score, is um, you know not a bad game for me, so I'm quite pleased with that. I think I'm going for... Ooh almost knocked it out there so yeah I'm going again for those left three so unfortunately oh and I missed it it's a fantastic game really worth playing if you remember it from back in the day if you've not played it before get down to special and lit and have a game